What in the world does it mean to multiply? Welcome back to my channel, Knowledge Over Grades. I am your host, Latrell Jackson, and if you've been wondering how to multiply or have been trying to explain it to your child, then you definitely want to continue watching this video and also subscribe and hit the bell because I am doing a two-part series on what multiplication means, how to do it, and how to remember your multiplication facts. So let's get started. Okay, so we're talking about what it means to multiply. So multiplication is a shortcut for adding the same number multiple times. So you see the word multiple is in our definition and that's how we can remember the meaning of multiplication. We're adding multiple times. Now, um, we're not actually adding though, it's the shortcut, but addition is the base for multiplication. With multiplication, we have to do a lot of memorization, especially of our one digit numbers. So let's see a little bit more about that. One digit multiplication allows us to memorize multiple amounts of equally sized groups that are added together. So like our numbers from zero to nine, we actually have to memorize those multiplication facts like five times seven or like um, nine times six, things like that. We have to memorize them. If we don't memorize them, then we'll be adding, okay? We'll be adding nine groups of six. So we'll be adding five groups of seven because we haven't memorized the fact that nine groups of six is actually 54 in total, okay? So you're going to get a multiplication times table sheet and I'm going to show you how to get that at the end of this video. And actually, instead of just going from zero to nine, um, most multiplication timetables, they go to 12, but I've actually gone to 15 because being a math coach, I've seen how understanding um, the multiplication facts of 13, 14, and 15 is really important and it becomes um, helpful to memorize those facts as well as time goes on in your math journey. So stick around to the end and you'll be able to get that multiplication um, times table sheet. So let's look at some examples of how we can um, add groups of equal sizes, okay? So here is a hand of candy. We can say that the hand is a group and the candy is the size of the group. So the size, we're going to say is three because there are three pieces of candy inside that group, okay? Now, that's easy to count. That's one group of three and it's just three. But if we add another three or another group of three to that one group of three, then we have two groups of three, right? That's kind of easy to count too. That's like saying three plus three, right? Three plus three is six. That's addition, right? Well, what if we had more groups, like a lot more, like this many? This is a lot more groups of three. And we want to know how many um, pieces of candy we have in total, like we did before with the six, with the three and then the six. So let's first see how many um, groups we have all together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine groups of three. Now, you could add up all the individual pieces of candy to find out how many pieces of candy we have total, or you can do three times nine because we see three nine times, okay? Three times nine is 27. Now, that's not something that I added. I didn't add these up real quick to get that answer. I actually had to memorize the multiplication fact that three times nine is 27. All right, so what if we just had six? If we had six groups or six hands with three pieces of candy in them, how many pieces of candy would we have in total? That's another multiplication um, question, and that would be three times six. That's 18. I didn't add them real quick. You didn't see me count them real quick. That's just something I had to memorize. So remembering your one-digit multiplication facts is really important, and when you're able to do that, you're able to um, multiply bigger numbers because let's say you have 147 times 4, right? You're not going to be um, memorizing 147 times 4 <laughs> because that's a really big number. 
But what you can do and what you're going to do is multiply that four to each individual digit in that number. So four times, so we have 147 times four, just a reminder. So that's gonna be four times seven, four times four, four times one, okay? So understanding what those basic one digit multiplication facts are and memorizing them will help you to solve that, that bigger multiplication problem. Okay, so you see how important it is to memorize your basic one-digit multiplication facts because then you can do anything. So let's look at this now as a pictorial illustration and we're going to look at it the backwards way, all right? So let's take, for example, these balloons. Here is a large group of balloons and we want to know how many there are. So our go-to operation is to count them using addition, right? So let's count them. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten balloons. So let's try to group our balloons in groups of three, okay? We're going to draw a circle around groups of three of the balloons. So we got one group of three, two groups of three, and three groups of three. And then we have this one balloon um, that is its own group. So we're actually not able to draw our 10 balloons into groups, uh, equal groups of three because we have one that's a group of one. So three is not going to be able to be our number that we use to group our balloons in equal groups. So let's try another number. Okay, so let's try to group our balloons in groups of four. See if we can get equal groups of four with none left over. So here's one group of four. Here's another group of four. Uh-oh, we have two left over. So we have two groups of four and another group that is not equal to the others. That, that group has two in it. So four is not the number we're going to be able to use to um, find equal groups of in our number of 10 balloons. So let's try to use five as our grouping method. We're going to group five balloons at a time. We got five here. One, one, two, three, four, five, and then five here. Cool. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. So we were able to group five balloons at a time without having anything left over. So we're able to group our balloons into fives equally. Nice. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Now we want to try to say this in different ways. So we have a total of 10 balloons and how can we say 10 balloons in different ways based on the fact that we're able to group our balloons in groups of five, okay? So we can say we have five plus five balloons. So five balloons plus five more balloons, we can say that. We can also say we have two multiples of five balloons, okay? So we have one group of five balloons and another group of five balloons. So that's multiple groups of five balloons, right? Two multiple groups of five balloons. Multiple, that sounds like multiply, right? Okay, let's keep that in mind. Five, two times. Five balloons, two times. We got it one time, then we got it another time, two times. Or five balloons times two. That's the one. Five times two is actually the mathematical um, phrase that we use when we're talking about multiplication. So let's see what it looks like in math notation. So in math notation, this is how you write it. Five times two equals 10. And the X means times. You'll see it a little bit differently as you move up in your math journey, um, but when you're, learn when you're first learning multiplication, there's an X, okay? Um, and we want to try to remember this multiplication fact because that's what it is, five times two equals 10, since now we know why it worked. So let's talk a little bit about the vocabulary surrounding multiplication. Okay, so the first vocabulary word is factors. And factors are the numbers that are being multiplied together. So as you can see in a diagram, five and two are our factors. Then we have the product. That is the result of multiplying. And 10 is our product. 
Now, if you want to get a little bit more specific about our factors, um, like which is which, then we start adding in these words. The first one is multiplicand. And that number is actually always the first number being multiplied. And that's what it is. It's the number that's being multiplied. And if we think about our diagram and our activity, that is going to be the size of the group. And when I say size, I mean how many balloons were in each group. And remember, we had five balloons in each of those groups. And then lastly is the multiplier. So the multiplier is the number doing the multiplying. And in our diagram, it was the number of groups that we had. So we had groups of five each, and then we had two of those groups of five. So the two was the amount of groups that there were of five balloons. So you might wonder, does two times five equal 10 also? Because you just switch the numbers. Does that work? Let's see. So how can we check if two times five works? How do you think we can check? Think about what we just did with our other balloons. How about let's try to make five groups of two. Before we had two groups of five, now let's try to make five groups of two. Okay, so that means we're, we're circling two balloons at a time. And we want to see if we're going to get five. So that's one group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two. Look at that, five groups of two. So we still have 10 balloons, but we were able to group them differently. So the reason why we were able to group them differently is because of the commutative property of multiplication. So let's think about the word commutative, okay? If we look at the word commutative, we're able to see commute as one of the root parts of it. So commute actually means to move or to travel. If you think about um, kids at college, right? So uh, some of them live on campus where they don't have to travel to go to school. And some of them actually live at home with their parents where they do have to travel or commute to school. So they have to move from their house to school in order to attend class. And that's how commute helps us to understand commutative, which helps us to understand commutative property of multiplication. This property allows us to move or change position of our factors and still get the same product. So as you see, we are able to do five times two equals 10 and two times five equals 10. So we can say five times two equals two times five. And let me show you a diagram of our balloons and how that looks. So as you can see with our balloons here, we have two groups of five, and that is five times two, five two times, and that gives us 10 balloons still. And then in our other diagram, we have five groups of two. So we've grouped two balloons together at a time, and we ended up with five groups all together. And that is two times five, which still gives us 10. And if we go back to our vocabulary page, we are able to switch those numbers also, making two the multiplicand. So two is the actual number that's being multiplied in. Five is the multiplier now, and that tells us how many times we are repeating that group of two, five times, okay? And remember that five groups of two balloons gives us 10 balloons altogether. Okay, so let's do a little exercise. We know that when we have 10 balloons, we can group the 10 into two groups of five, right? And that is the same as saying five plus five, which is also the same as saying five times two, because we see five two times. Or we can say we have two groups of five, and that gives us five times two. But what if we added another group of five? So here's another group of five, and now we have three groups of five, okay? So that's five plus five plus five. How can we write that as multiplication? Well, we have five three times, so that's five times three, right? 
what is our answer for five times three? Well, let's add them all up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we have fifteen balloons total, and that is the answer for five times three. So that's another multiplication fact you can add to your math toolbox. Let's say we add another group of five. So now we have four groups of five. Five added one, two, three, four times. So that's going to be five times four. Now, how many balloons do we have now? Well, we know that the first three groups gave us 15 balloons, right? So let's just start at the next number, 16. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Our answer for adding five four times or doing five times four is 20. There's another multiplication fact you can add to your toolbox. Well, as you know, we did not cover all of the multiplication facts that you need to know. So you might be wondering, how am I going to remember all of my multiplication facts? Well, it definitely takes a lot of practice and a lot of drilling yourself to remember your multiplication facts. But you got the first thing down by understanding why it works, why multiplication is what it is. So here are some things, some suggestions you can use to um, help you memorize your multiplication facts. First, you're going to refer to your multiplication times table, which I have made one and it's linked for you in the description of this video for you to download. And you're going to practice trying to figure out how to use it, which I am going to teach you in the next video. Um, but it's going to help you as a reference to understand what your multiplication facts are. So you want to practice by um, using your table, doing drills, and I also have a quiz for you to take that you can help that can help you to um, remember your multiplication facts as well. All linked in the description of this video. Um, you can ask your parents, friends, teachers to drill you on your multiplication facts. You can play um, multiplication fact games online. Um, there are a bunch of tricks that you can learn to help you memorize some. And you can also listen to songs. There are a bunch of songs out there that help you to remember your multiplication facts. One that I always refer to are the Schoolhouse Rock multiplication songs because they're so, they're classics and they're so memorable. My favorite one is the three times multiplication song. What's the name of it? Three is the magic number. <laughs> so definitely check out the Schoolhouse Rock videos. You can just YouTube them, Schoolhouse Rock, Multiplication 3, Multiplication 5. So I invite you to download the multiplication table, also to take the quiz so that can help you understand and solidify what you learned in this video today. And then come back next week or watch my next video in this series on how to um, understand the multiplication table and also some rules of multiplication that you need to remember. It will kind of take away some of the facts you need to remember because they will become no-brainers and you can focus on the ones that are a little bit more difficult to remember. So thanks for watching my video. Check out the other videos that I've made on my channel and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!